Hey there, it's Sandy, and this is part two of a video about these brush pens that I bought a long time ago, forgot about, and have recently found. So I'm going to fill them with watercolors. I filled it the first one with ink. It was a set of three pens, and that went great. Loved that. Have done a bunch of drawing with it this week. However, during the premiere of the previous video, when I showed them, a bunch of you asked, can you put watercolor in them? And I had some successes and some fails. My PH Martins are not in great shape. I'll tell you more about them, but it was a little hard to suck enough color out of them. I didn't really know what was going on here. I kind of seemed to be sucking up air. So when I mixed up some Daniel Smith traditional watercolor, I found out why. So mixed it up thinking I was mixing it really nicely. It, it had like, you know, lots of color to it. So isn't this nice and dark? That's great, right? And then filled the third pen with that color. Uh, one of the other things too I was wondering is, can I clean these afterwards? So stay tuned at the end. I'll show you my pen cleaning attempt. But what I found out was when I used the piston, which is kind of like a turkey baster, to twist and start trying to suck the color into the pen, if the nib and the plastic right around the edge of the nib stayed under the water, so the brush and the plastic were, were under the liquid, then it would continue sucking up color. So I thought, let me try it a second time, see if I can get more color into the pen. And you'll kind of see that. That was why it didn't work as great with my green, because I didn't have enough color in that green bottle since it's almost empty. So there's that. So just make sure you submerge it in order to suck more ink or watercolor or whatever into the pen. So let's use these colors and make a sketch. In that last video, I also showed you this clip of the sketchbook that you make in the ink sketching class that's on my website, link in the doobly-doo too. This one, you just kind of learn a lot of different ink sketching techniques for different elements, kind of keep the scene moving across all of it. It's what I love about accordion sketchbooks. And you can take that class with a different sketchbook. You can either make one, like I showed you in that last video. Somebody mentioned the Hanamula zigzag book. And I remembered I had this one. Now that four by six is smaller than this one. So this is much larger, but I'm gonna link this one and the four by six. You could do the class in either one of them. Doesn't really matter. You could make a four by six one though, if you wanna go see the last video on how to do that and use whatever paper you'd like. I tried this one specifically because people were asking if the paper is good to do that ink sketching class. And I think I can say yes. Um, it's even better for water than the Pentallic was. I kind of like what it does with watercolor. It's a bit softer of paper. So the ink might feather a little bit with certain pens. I don't know. I haven't really gone crazy with it, but I think you'll be able to do the class just fine on the Hanamula if you don't want to make one. All right, so the uh, waterfalls that you are seeing on screen here are Myrtle Falls. And this is the top section of it. There's also a bottom section. I was standing on the bridge up at the top when I took that first piece of video. So it's not a spectacular falls. We didn't have to hike really far, but my cousin and I went up there. She was visiting and she's really into like volcanoes, that kind of thing. Her whole family is park rangers and science people. So I learned a ton from her about alpine and subalpine and we watched the trees as they changed as we drew, drove up and I've noticed some things about the trees as an artist like they get skinnier the branches get tighter and they get more clustered so they're stronger and she was able to tell me that that is because of the the way that the snow catches them and the wind that shears by and stuff and she hadn't thought about visually what they look like so she was learning the visuals from me and looking at how the branches cluster versus I was looking at the science side of what she was talking about. So it was a really interesting time spent with her. She's just 21, but smart as a whip. And we had a great time up on Rainier. We weren't there for long because we didn't leave until later in the morning. Not the wisest thing when it's a couple hours drive and I was just watching the clouds that are covering Mount Rainier. Like Mount Rainier is up above at the top up there, the big 
empty space and we couldn't even see it because the clouds were just coming in and I was a little nervous about driving back on all the switchbacks if it started pouring down rain on us. So we didn't stop to do any sketching, we just did a very short hike over to Myrtle Falls. So I have done a quick pencil sketch, even if I was out in the field I probably wouldn't do that much pencil sketching, but the uh, the blue aqua color, I think that's what this one is, <laughs> not great. Unfortunately, my PH Martins have dried out sitting on the shelf. They haven't been used. It's not PH Martins' fault. It's just they've been sitting there for like 10 years. And I need to go through them and get rid of the ones that don't have enough liquid in them. But I just love the little rainbow row that they make. So I haven't been able to bring myself to get rid of them. But I was looking around for a green and this was the only one that had enough juice that I thought I could get to go into the pen. I could probably water some down and I might do that and try to use these paints up before they're totally gone. And then this is the moon glow. I thought I had mixed it nice and heavy and thick and apparently not. Now if you want to do light sketching, you know, very faint type of sketching, you could absolutely do that with this. And you can get really thin lines with these brush pens. You know, there are lots of different weights you can get. I just wanted to put some color in here because I was going to use the black one as well and a fountain pen. Just wanted to combine all of it. So really here I'm putting the shadows into some of these rock areas. I'm not worried about trying to make every rock match exactly what's at Myrtle Falls. I just wanted the feel of being there. And I am pleased to report that when I sent a picture of the sketch to my cousin, she's like, Myrtle Falls, and was very excited. So, so that was nice. So I'm just kind of trying to create a little bit of texture with the color underneath. Now, if you were to you know do the whole sketch first and then add the color, you could do the watercolor over top of the black ink work that I'm going to be doing. So the, the watercolor pen work as well as this watercolor brush work. Because if you're putting, like I did, waterproof ink into the black pen that you're using, either a brush pen or a um, just a, a regular fountain pen, then you can go over that with watercolor anytime. I wanted to do the watercolor first because it helps me to make sure that I indicate the overall sense of color in the drawing, the painting, the sketch, whatever, so I can kind of know where the colors are. And then with the pen, I can stop if I start covering too much area. Because when I start making my pen drawing, I get like really excited and put a lot of detail in it and I don't really leave enough real estate to be able to see the color. And then my pen drawing ends up being like all pen with just a little tiny bit of the color showing through. At least this way, if, if I want some of these bright yellows and reds and things that we saw out there in the hillsides, if I want them to show up, then I know to leave them and not go a little too crazy with the black. While the watercolor was still a bit fresh, I went in with the black one. And this is the platinum carbon black ink that I use in all of my fountain pens. And I'm just letting it work its way into some of those nice wet areas. And I even considered in some spots that had dried, painting in some more water so I could get that nice little burst going. Because it gives a watercolor feel to some of the edges without having to do a whole lot to achieve that. Just dropping a bit of black ink into a wet area is kind of a nice, nice way to get plants to emerge from it, that sort of thing. And then I'm just going to use the tip of the pen. I told you, you can get some fine details with it. You can use just the tip to create small textures, that kind of thing. All these small rocks that were in the waterfall, etc. So, you know, a lot of different techniques that you can use with any brush pen. But with this one, the thing that I didn't mention in the last video, and I was kind of kicking myself when I got it all done because I didn't have time to re-record, but these differ from those pens that you squeeze, like regular aqua brushes. And I, you know, kind of struggled with what to call this because, you know, they kind of give it a, a very generic name on Amazon for these pens. But this is not really a brush pen in the normal sense because most people think of aqua brushes. Those have very soft plastic and you can squeeze them and then it'll push the liquid out of the nib and you end up 
half the time, at least I end up half the time, blooping on my drawing because those things are not controllable. I guess maybe if you practice with them a lot, maybe you can better control them, but I cannot control them. So I don't tend to like them. Uh, only take them with me for certain kinds of sketching that I'm going to be doing. But this pen doesn't push the ink out on its own. Like you're not squeezing it to get the ink to come out. Now, if you want to bloop some ink, you can turn the piston and push ink out. But I didn't want that, so didn't end up doing it. Now, the clouds that were up there, my cousin and I were laughing because they just kind of kept blowing in and blowing out. And we'd see like a little peak at the mountain and then nothing. So I thought, you know, I could draw the mountain in there. But I'm just going to put that up there because it's a real memory of the day we had because we... We just kept talking to the mountain the whole time. <laughs> like as we were leaving, there was a, a clearing, like the sun came out for a few minutes while we were walking to the parking lot. And we were like, yes, yes, on the way down, we're going to get these great views because they have these beautiful switchbacks back and forth as you're coming down the mountain. And we, had, we knew exactly where all the pullouts were that we wanted to stop and take pictures on the way out. And we were like, yeah, we're going to go down to that one and we're going to look up and the mountain's going to be there. And no, it just got more and more gray as <laughs> we so went down. It's just a little sun break. So unfortunately, it was not a great, great thing in terms of, you know, taking lots of pictures. But I, I just learned so much from her in terms of, you know, the, the science behind the way trees change as they go from subalpine to alpine, etc., and she learned so much from me about looking at things from an artist's perspective and seeing different things than she saw. It was just a very cool conversation we had. And I have to say, if anybody had told me I was going to have a very interesting day spent with a 21-year-old and have anything to say to her, I have to admit, I was a little nervous when we had planned this because she was just in town for a bit and she wanted to go do something with me. I thought, I don't have anything in common with her. I don't, I don't know. But we found plenty to talk about, which was great. And I really enjoyed her. And she wants to come back and try this again, maybe do a bigger hike, which means I have to become athletic before we do, because even the hike up to this little area was a little much for me because I hadn't been feeling well for a few days. And on top of that, I am just ridiculously getting old and out of shape. So there's that. So the rocks all got done. I'm using, by the way, a medium fountain pen for this detail that I'm adding in. I like the pairing of a, a pen line along with the brush lines because the, the brush, I paid attention to adding where the dark spots would be. So I, I squint when I'm looking at something to try to see where the darks are. When you squint, it tries to make an average out of everything you see when it makes it kind of blurry. And that will give you the overall value set that you need in your art piece. So if you want this hillside, there's this little little hill of trees, you know, some very tiny scrubby pines and a few bigger ones. Like that whole thing was a line coming down the hill. And in order to make it dark enough, I just kept kind of adding more and more of the black to it. There were all these plants coming down the hillside toward the rocks and the waterfall and just adding some of them in there. This is where I was really thinking consciously of leaving enough of the orange and the yellow because the temptation is going to be to try to draw in every single little plant in there and try to, you know, make outlines and shapes around them. And I wanted to be sure that I left enough of that bright color because the beautiful color was what we noted I know in the video, it, you know, it doesn't look super bright, but when the sun would come out and hit one of these hillsides, it turned into these gorgeous colors. These are a little brighter than what I saw, but the brightness is going to remind me every single time I look at this page in the sketchbook of that day and how stunning it was. They were like these really yummy, rich yellow ochre types of colors with just pops of reds. I mean, they would just be little red plants. So expect that I might be doing some more paintings uh, and drawings and things of my, my little adventure up there because it was super fun. And I hope she comes back because I want to have an excuse to go out there with her again. Now this area I struggled with. I was trying to figure out how to put something more detailed 
because there were a lot of white flowers as well and I wanted to leave some of the whites. But then it just started feeling fussy as I was, you know, kind of trying to scribble in some details and that was just more than I could handle. I just wanted to make some bigger marks. So I got the brush back out. And at a couple points, I just started laying the brush down and filling in some areas. Realized in the photo, this is almost all dark, 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 dark green. And just gonna cover that up. You know, it's not an important area of the drawing. Anytime I get to the end of a drawing or a painting and I find myself fussing over detail, I have to ask myself, is it the most important part or is it just that I can't let go and say it's done? And so here I said it was just done <laughs> because the important things for me were the color to remember it was fall, the missing mountain up above, the little tiny waterfall section at the top, and those little grasses and things at the bottom didn't really matter. So now let's get to the cleaning of the pens part where Sandy sacrifices her art supplies so you don't have to. <laughs> and with this, I just started sucking in clean water and expelling dirty and sucking in clean and expelling dirty. And I started feeling like the inside of the pen might be loosening. It was just rattling a little bit more. And I don't think these pens are made of such quality that they were intended to be cleaned out this way. They're probably not having little robots testing them to see how many times you can use the piston. So eventually, after even trying to shake it to see if I can get more color out, I decided this was just a staining color and the staining color is just going to stain and that's the way it's going to be. And I'm just going to use a green or a blue in this pen when I refill it. And it's not going to matter that there was some stained color left. I just wanted to get most of it out of there so that it didn't mix and contaminate whatever I used. Went to my ink collection, found another of my platinum inks. This is forest black. Originally I got it because I thought it was a black with a hint of green. And instead it's a green with just a bare minimum hint of black, but it's a great tree green. Not always great for drawing by itself. I had it in a pen for a while and I didn't like it. It just didn't have enough oomph for me, but I do like using it for painting with and that sort of thing. So having it in a brush is gonna be real helpful when I go out and do urban sketching. The other color is Amethyst de L'Oreal by the company Jacques Herbin. I don't know if I said any of that right, if I remember my college French. So if I did not say it right, please don't shoot me, but I tried. <laughs> so filled up that pen as well. I love this one for the bottle, if not the color, like the bottle is just beautiful. And I might have to start doing some sketching in these colors because they're kind of fun. I've been doing a lot of sketching in black for Inktober so far. and. Haven't really pulled color in other than watercolor washes, so it might be fun to actually do the line drawings in these brush pens. So look for that over on my socials. So I decided to draw some rocks with trees alongside them to also remember what I learned from Aurora during our little adventure because she told me all about the striations in the rocks and what they meant volcanically and blah, blah, blah. Just all the, all the things I learned. So there's my little teeny tiny test sketch and the finished one. So I hope this helped you. I hope you learned something about these pens. If you should decide to get them, just remember they're cheap pens. Don't expect the universe from them, but they're kind of fun to play with. So that's it for me today. I will see you again next week. Have a great weekend. Go create something every day. And if it's an Inktober thing, that's even better. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.